Today's adventure takes us just past Page, Arizona, to a place they call the New Wave. And of course, we went in Kelly's Jeep Gladiator <laughs> Rubicon, <laughs> or as he calls it, Ruby. <laughs> what is what is happening? Hello. I feel like I'm in a movie and it's a mechanical monster. You don't need four-wheel drive to go to the new wave, but if you do, you can drive a little further and see a little bit more. Yeah, this is cool. Oh, you got it on now. <laughs> Give it the thumbs up. I'm just trying to. I'm just. I'm new to this experience. Oh, that is cool. So now what's it doing? Hey, don't look up my shorts. <laughs> Wait, do a matrix. Go right by my head. Uh... <laughs> The trail's only supposed to be about a mile, but we went much further as we hiked up and around through some of the rock formations. This is the trail. There's actually rocks marking it. Okay, Kelly, where are we at? We are at the New Wave in Arizona up my page. About, what, 10 minutes out of page? Yeah. Maybe. We just enjoyed a delicious, delightful meal of Taco Bell, Burrito Supreme's Rain, and I believe the Mexican pizza is supposed to come back soon. Okay, I'm not thinking about food. There's this advertisement. The new wave gets its name from the wave-like texture and contours of the limestone formations here. Of course, they call it the new wave because most people are familiar with the wave a little farther north in Arizona that requires a permit. This site doesn't require any permit, and not many people know about it, and not many people go there, but it's just a couple minutes from Page and located right off the interstate. So Kelly, did I ever tell you the story about the cat I had when I was a kid? Nope. As you look at some of the video from the new wave, I'll tell you the story about our cat we had when I was just a kid. Grew up on 23rd Avenue in Myrtle, Phoenix, Arizona, and we had this cat always trying to run inside the house. Whenever you open the door, just shoot in. My dad used to always say, at night, make sure you put the cat out. So, at any rate, we were having dinner, as we always do as a family. And after dinner, one of our favorite desserts is ice cream. And since we come from a large family, have a couple freezers and one's out back in the garage. And so when we were done eating, me being the youngest, they sent out to get the ice cream. Of course, I went out and opened the door to the freezer and got the ice cream and came inside. And my dad just takes the whole container of ice cream, opens it up, and with a big knife, slices it up into nine pieces and each one of us get a piece. Of course my sisters didn't like square ice cream because they thought it tasted different than when it's scooped. But that's a whole nother story. At any rate, getting back to the cat story, when we're done eating and done, I guess, eating the ice cream, I went back out into the freezer to put the ice cream back and lo and behold when I 
got the ice cream, the cat had jumped in the door and into the freezer, and now the cat was, well, basically frozen. So I pull this frozen cat out, take it into the house, and I'm like, you know, we froze the cat. What do we do? And my dad's not a real animal person, so he didn't know what to do. And he asked the neighbor. And the neighbor said, well, you need to give it some sort of stimulant. Give it some alcohol or something. And maybe that'll wake it up and get it going. And we don't drink, so we don't have any alcohol in the house. So being resourceful, resourceful, my dad said, well, let's give it a little gasoline. So got just like a teaspoon of gasoline, propped that cat up, and poured that gasoline down the cat's throat. And we'd no sooner done that than that cat jumps up, runs around the house like twice, comes back, and drops over dead. So what happened? It ran out of gas. Okay, I said it was a story. I didn't say it was a good story. But there you have it. Back to the wave. Look at the contours of that limestone. It's just a cool sight to see and to be there. Hope you're enjoying the video. Oh, little wing arch over there. Now that's looking up, down, and yeah, at us. It's a 360 camera, and I choose what direction to show when I edit it. That's crazy. What do you have to say, Kelly? <laughs> you caught me off guard. I don't know. I don't know. What do you think of this place? I think this is awesome. I mean, a 360 degree view of absolutely nothing. It's like, I want to see what that sand is over there. I just want to keep exploring. Let's go that way. We got it. Keep your balance intact, Jerry. It's a long spill. Yep, it's going to be slick and it's straight down. Careful, it gets a little narrow. <laughs> okay, we think this is the new wave. And my travel advisor. I got him here. <laughs> but just very cool I gotta see the other sight side. to see. It was interesting because every time we went around a new rock, it's, I think this is the new wave. No, that's a moth. But interesting to see these little puddles. And I don't know if there's one spot that is the wave or if the whole place collectively is called the new wave. But there's lots of little areas that could be considered the wave or look kind of like the actual wave rather than the new wave but as you'll see in a minute if you follow the trail there is one point where the rocks lead to an area that looks like the wave so i'm going to claim that was what they really consider the new wave. But lots of interesting rock formations. Let's get on to another location in the same area. We saw that cave as we were hiking. Rather than walk, we decided to drive to it. So we loaded up in the Rubicon, Ruby. One cool thing about these lesser known sites, there aren't many people there. 
And even though there's evidence that a lot of people have been there previously, it's not like our national parks where they're almost like being in some sort of theme park or amusement park. But it's cool to see. So let's get out and explore the cave. As it turns out, there wasn't much to explore, but it made for a nice parking place as we explored some other areas. It's interesting that while Page is known for Lake Powell and all the boating opportunities, known for Antelope Canyon, Upper and Lower, Horseshoe Bend, this site doesn't require any fee to get to. It's kind of like a number of years ago, Horseshoe Bend. You could just drive up and go and hike out there. Now, there's a huge parking lot, and it costs you to park. Antelope Canyon used to be pretty reasonably priced. But now, you're probably looking at a hundred plus bucks. And there are a number of other slot canyons not far away that are cool to see. And that don't cost a thing. Though, most people take get a guide to go see them because many of them require four-wheel drive to get there. And of course, the nice thing on this trip is we've got that four-wheel drive. So once we finish checking out the new wave, we of course drove back to 89, and headed just a little bit farther north to Big Water, where we were going to do, well, hike to the Waweep Hoodoos. Well, not as good as a drone, this camera sure gives the effect that I'm actually flying a drone. Watch it, can we drive this cheap? I don't remember what Kelly was laughing about, but I had to turn the sound up for a minute just to, well, just so you could hear him laughing. We always have a good time. You never know what we're going to get into next. <laughs> I don't know, that sound didn't sound human. It sounded more like a crow cawing. But, we headed on to look for those hoodoos. And I'd come here before, and at that time when I went to cross this river, it rained recently and it was very wide and deep. This time, well, it was pretty much nothing for Kelly's Jeep to go across. But something to be aware of. It's just a little further down the road where the trailhead starts. And then, when we realized it was a nine mile hike, you can see the sun's starting to get a little lower, we decided we're not going to be able to hike to see the white ghost hoodoo on this trip. But we decided we could at least drive the road a little further and see what is up ahead. And it got a little gnarly, but nothing that the Rubicon couldn't handle. I put these videos in for Rachel, Kelly's wife, because I know she loves to see him driving on the edges of cliffs. But we we were safe. It's not as bad as it looks. <laughs> That's what we always say. And when we were walking on those cliffs, it wasn't as bad as it looks. But it's just fun exploring, even if we're not out hiking. Finding new and interesting locations for future trips. I guarantee you we'll be back here 
as well as a number of other interesting sites in the area. I hope you enjoyed this video, seeing some of our adventures. But before we end, we stumbled on that. Look at where I am! Look who's here with me! <laughs> Woo! Give it the thumbs up! I mean, this is crazy. This is crazy. The unnamed, unfound hoodoo. Well, not unfound. Unnamed. <laughs> we found it. Just a cool rock formation we found before the sun sets. You can see Kelly's Jeep in the background. Just a short little hike to it. But it's just these interesting finds that make it all worthwhile. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you have a great day. And this is just day one of our adventures. So we'll have a bunch of other interesting hikes and interesting locations. So stay tuned whenever I get around to it. But have a great day.